five more celebrities have taken on the challenge to become MasterChef champion. Three salmon, Vicky, you are going to get it. What the fish loving hell? I think boxing's easier. Last time, it was DJ Judge Jules who was to leave the competition. Now the remaining four have returned to continue their quest. Absolutely loving the competition. Being in MasterChef has actually got me cooking again because I haven't done it in 25 odd years. We're going to be walking into a new challenge and it could be anything. I am nervous, my hands are shaking now. I want to really improve. I'm like a culinary sponge, just absorbing <laughs> all of the expertise around me. The good thing about boxing is, you know, I'm on the safe side of the ropes, but when you're in the kitchen, there isn't no safe side, is there? New day, new challenge, four celebs, and we are going to put them through their paces. John, we're going to turn up the heat. We are really going to put them under pressure. Welcome back to the MasterChef Kitchen, a very different looking MasterChef Kitchen, and we've got a cracking challenge for you. We call this the Pears Challenge, and it's going to be a real test of your teamwork and your communication skills. Two teams, Adam and Tomas, you are the blue team. Get to know each other. <laughs> Kelly and Vicky, <laughs> you are the red team. Girls versus boys. <laughs> Each team is going to cook a dish and two portions of that dish. And those two portions must look and taste the same as each other at the end of the challenge. Mm. The simple fact is, though, you will not be working next to each other. <laughs> Light bulb. <laughs> You'll be cooking on opposite sides of the wall from each other. Behind you are the ingredients that you will need for your dishes and a set of basic instructions. Go and put your aprons on, have a look at your ingredients, make a plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Each team has been given a different vegetarian dish with separate trays of ingredients for every element. I've never made any of this. I can get away with a mayonnaise, I think. Adam and Tomash will be making John's Mexican tacos filled with cabbage coleslaw, smashed avocado, salt and pepper tofu, and topped with a spicy mayonnaise. Oh, we have to make our own, is it tortillas? Tortilla is simply made of masa, a flour mixture made from corn and lime. Two parts flour to one and a half parts hot water because the hot water makes it come together. If you use cold water, it doesn't. It goes like cement. Is that why when it cools, it sets? Yes. And the mixture comes together fairly quickly. It's now a matter of taking them into the size you want them to be. I've never seen one of these before. I've never. I've only opened them in a packet. Put one bit in there, a bit of paper. Push it down and then give it a squeeze. Turn it by 90 degrees. Give it a squeeze. So to keep on turning them around and squeezing them, there's your taco, and it's thin. Just a dry pan. Whilst they're hot, grab one of these. It's a taco stand. And then you just push them in. Ah! I wonder how you made them curvy. If they get cold, they'll just break. You know how to make mayo. I've, got I've a, never made mayo. I've never, I've never made it. But you know how to do I've got, it. I've got a, a rough idea. So it's egg yolk. It's only egg yolk, no whites in there. So now instant mayo. One whole egg. Not an egg yolk, a whole egg. I want it to be spicy. So I'm going to put in half a chilli. Mustard, vinegar and olive oil are added to the egg before mixing. Stick blender in. 
It's a reaction between the mustard, the vinegar, and the egg so that the whole thing emulsifies or comes together. Mayonnaise. Genius. So what are we going to start with? It's the coleslaw that goes at the bottom. It's then the avocado. Smashed avocado. We don't want a paste. We want some texture. Some Tabasco. A couple of shakes, depending on how spicy you want it. A little bit of lime. 100% I would eat this. 100% I wouldn't. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't like tacos and I don't like tofu. <laughs> tofu is bland, same as pasta. So you've got to put flavour around it or with it. White peppercorns, salt, a little bit of chilli powder, but not much. The seasoning is added to a corn flour and plain flour mix. That coating on the outside gives you texture, lovely crispy texture, but it's seasoned. Gently, drop them in. I don't think anything here is cooked apart from the tofu and the, um, the taco. Right. How do you want them to present it, mate? With a bit of style and elegance so you can see everything in it. So a bit of cabbage, our slaw in the bottom, a bit of avo, a bit of chilli, and you drop the hot tofu into the coriander. And then we take a bit of tofu, and then a little bit of mayo. There you go. Very, very good indeed. I'm going to have to freestyle it a little bit because I don't cook tofu often, but I've done it before, right. number, you know, a few times. Vicky and Kelly are both making John's falafel, served in a flatbread filled with tabbouleh, a salad made from cracked wheat and parsley, pickled red onions and radishes, and finished with a tahini or sesame seed sauce. So let's uh, start with the bread. It's got a yeast in it, so it does rise, and we've got to activate that yeast first. And then sugar. So the yeast already, with that little bit of sugar, suddenly go goes to liquid. Once you've got that, warm milk, and then some yogurt, flour, and then your salt. And then what you want is a soft dough and not kneaded too much. And if you work it too much, it doesn't puff up. Then leave it for about 20, 25 minutes and let it rise. So that's the first job they've got to do is get that bread dough made. I think making one of these things on their own, which I'm not familiar with, would be hard enough without the fact that I'm going to have to make it look identical to yours. And we can't even work together. Now for a quick pickle. Equal quantities, vinegar and water, and then a good tablespoon of sugar. Take it under the heat and warm it. What are we going to do with onion? You're going to do rings? You're going to do... Yeah, slice it like that. Uh, right, so... So half. Say. So like that way. Yeah. Got it. it looks like half rings. Yeah, so cut it in half. Yeah. yeah. In goes the onions. Put your radishes in a bowl. Pour the whole mixture across the top. Well, that took no time at all. I mean, that was literally a couple of minutes. The sauce is made with tahini, a sesame seed paste blended with garlic, water, and a squeeze of lemon juice. Now I'm going to make tabbouleh, salad made from cracked wheat and parsley. All you do is just soak it in hot water in the same way as you soak couscous. Got to be honest, I've never heard of any of these dishes. So tabbouleh, it's like, um, it's really Lebanese, all those sort of, like, vibes. Once soaked, the cracked wheat is added to chopped parsley, spring onion, tomato and mint. A little bit of olive oil, lemon juice. And it should be light and fluffy, and it shouldn't be all clumped together. Beautiful. Now we need to make the falafels themselves. So I've got fava beans, which I have soaked in water overnight. They're really, really bland, so you need to flavour them. The beans will be flavoured with chopped onion, garlic, celery, parsley and coriander. And then the dried spices. Lots of cumin, sumac, <sighs> lemony in flavour, cayenne, and then a green chilli. Whole thing. Stalk and all. Sling it all in there. Put them in there. Then mix it all together. 
I mean, Kelly, it all sounds great in theory, but you're not actually telling us what to do. We're just seeing we're bumming it all in there, aren't we? Yeah. We'll put it in and turn it on and let it mix. So now the soaked beans, and it doesn't matter, there's a little bit of liquid, but not too much, because otherwise, you know, the soup. That's a beautiful, fragrant mix. That's the secret of the good falafel. It needs to be really well flavoured. So there's your falafel mix. Flatbread. Right, brilliant. The bread's not going to take long, is it? It's going to be a no. matter of minutes. When it's cooked one side, they've got to turn it over and cook the other side. And now for our falafel itself. Shape it. How right. big we're thinking? I'm thinking that. Show me that on you. Pretty much the same, same there. Size, brilliant. Okay. They take about four or five minutes each. How can you tell when they're done? They will float to the top. You see these ones here are floated to the top? And they just come out. So now, any way you want to serve it, really. I would cut the bread in half and make sure that you can actually open that bread up, because remember, we want the pocket. Tabbouleh. <laughs> Falafels. Ooh. Working for me. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. <sighs> huh. It's like the blind leading the blind, do you? But I'm a very good team player. Okay. I'm not, that's the problem. So... <gasps> what? What do you need to get that, But we'll, we, we'll stick together. Got this, babe. I know how to smash an avocado, though. Okay, Tomas, can you swap to the other side, please? You're on the other side of the wall. Vicky, can you swap over to this side, please? Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, Beth. Make sure we talk. <laughs> talk as much as you want. Hi, Adam. 50 minutes. Let's cook. Get the flour for the, the mass... taco, yeah? The, yeah, for the taco, the mass of flour. Vicky, have you got the milk in? No, Kel, I haven't. Put the milk on yeah. and add the sugar. So how much yeast do you want in, Kel? Use, use all the milk. All the yeast? All the milk and all the sugar. OK, now put 200 grams. Yeah. What was it, 200? Yeah, I'm just still putting it in. How precise does it have to be? And now 160 mils of water. Actually, do you know what? what? Rather than taking that cold water, can you put 160 mils of hot water instead? Bit late. Yeah, so pour that water out Thomas, and get hot water. Can't, it's already gone into the flour. How does your dough feel? Crumbly. Is it still crumbly? Yeah. Add a bit more hot water. Tomash seems very comfortable with making a dough, so I think Adam is looking to Tomash for a bit of guidance. It's still very, very crumbly. Take it out of the bowl, and it's got to be a bit like plasticine. No, nah, mine's, no, mine's still nowhere like that. I've cut my dough into four equal parts, so I've got four little balls now. <laughs> <laughs> On the red team, Kelly and Vicky have got their flatbread dough underway. Vicky. Yes, babe. Once the milk's warm and the yeast is dissolved, add it, add it to the flour in the bowl. Kelly, I'm going in with my mixture. At the moment, Kelly is taking the lead. Do this, add that. Have you um, started mixing your flour and yeast and milk? Yes, babe. Oh, God, that smells horrible. That's OK, as long as Kelly is confident with what she's doing. I've never made any of this dish. Why couldn't you just give me sardines to do? <laughs> I want to get this made first so it can prove, which means, uh, I don't know what it means. I'm just trying to sound clever. Right, Kel? Yeah? I think my door is in a really good position here. I'm going to cover it with cling film and leave it to proof. Yeah, cover it for a little bit. I've put it in a bowl. OK, Look yes. Up. I'm cheating. Don't tell anyone. 20 minutes gone. Tom Ash and Adam are still working on their tortillas. 
How many have you done? Uh, I'm on the... I've just done my second one. OK, I'm just doing the third one. I'm going to heat up the pan now. Yeah, OK. How much oil are you putting in it? Put a teaspoon to start with and then we'll add if we need. All right. Tom, Ash and Adam are doing the task, but they're so slow. How can we measure that we've got them the same size? There's a measuring jug. Yeah. Turn it upside down. Yeah. Is it the same size as the top of the uh, tackle? Mine are a bit bigger than that. You reckon I should make them smaller? Well, I can't make mine bigger. How long do you reckon they'll take to cook? I'd say at least um, three minutes on one side, two, three minutes. Really? Thomas, do you cook both sides of a taco? Yes, both sides. Yeah. They've still got to make smashed abo, they've got to make slaw, they've got to make mayonnaise, then do the salt and pepper tofu. As soon as it's been cooked, as soon as it's been done, put it in the, in the, the wooden uh, cradle. You have to bend it when it's hot. OK, mate. With their flatbread dough proving, Vicky and Kelly are prepping their falafel mix. OK, talk quantities. I'm putting the... They look like butter beans into the... They're called fava beans. The fava beans? Yeah, let's put every... Put How many are you going to use, mate? Put, them all, put it all in. I like your enthusiasm. Whole celery, half an onion. And half of the green pepper. Half... Oh, no, use the whole green pepper. That's, that's a chilli, babe, right? All right, the chilli. Use the whole chilli. You want to use the whole chilli? Yeah, use the whole chilli, so it gives it flavour. OK, babes, you're wild and I love it. Talk to me about these herby things. Start, the, start your mixer. Kelly has got a quiet voice, so Vicky is struggling to hear Kelly. How many mint leaves did you use? Ken, I can't hear you over the blender, Pess. Hey? Yeah, I'm not rolling the bread yet. I'm She's gone. mixing She's this gone other out. stuff. <laughs> it's just a load of screaming. I'm blending, Kel, I'm blending. Going on over the really noisy blenders. Shush. Oh, that looks fluffy. Kelly? Yeah? Mine's starting to look like falafels. I don't know what they're supposed to look like. OK, Kelly, so four medium-sized bowls? Yeah. I think we're going to need a bit of flour for it. Speak up, Kel! Vicky and Kelly have got two very, very different consistencies for their falafels. Kelly's added so much water that now we've actually got a liquid mixture. The problem is she's going to put it into a deep fryer in a basket, and because it's wet, it will stick to the bottom of the basket. You are halfway. 25 minutes left. Right, I've done half a lemon, half a lime in the avocado. Yeah. With ten strokes of zest and ten drops of Tabasco. Yeah. Now, should we do the mayo? Right, separate the egg. Right, okay. yeah, separate the egg. Yeah, and we just need the yolk, yeah? Yeah. OK, I've got the yolk. Now what? I'm making an absolute balls up of separating it. Just tiny yolk? If Adam's got a recipe for mayonnaise with an egg yolk that works for him, absolutely fine. And that can work, no problem. But he's then got to communicate to Tom Ash what it is he's done. How much white wine vinegar? I'll be honest with you, I haven't got a clue. Ta let's go through a tablespoon. No, I'd say half a teaspoon. Is that all? Tell me how much oil to pour in. Just slowly start adding it. Slowly. I mean, really, really slowly. How much in total? Um, I don't know. It's until it starts emulsifying, but you've got to do it really slowly. I've never done this. I've only ever read about it. <laughs> I'd say this does not look like mayo. Just keep adding the oil. I know. I don't like the stuff I buy in the shop. The more oil you add, the more it gets thicker. Well, that sounds like a good result. Tomas seems to be working out the mayonnaise and working out its consistency. Is your mayo thickened? Yeah, it's quite thick. I think it's decent. Mine's like soup. Yeah, it's like a thick soup. No, no. Mine's like a consomme. <laughs> Adam's read about how to make mayonnaise, so what he's now got to do is try and think about what he's read. We have got another egg, have we? On the red team, Vicky and Kelly's dough is ready for rolling. Have you done it round? No, flat? I've done it like a pita bread shape. Pita bread, OK. Right, Kel, I'm getting me flatbread in the oven, mate. Sorry? Getting me flatbread in the oven. I'm rolling still. OK, babes, no worries. 
Is your bread in yet? It's just going in now. Let me know and then we'll do the tabbouleh together, right? I've never done this one. You better tell me how to make it. <laughs> You're joking. You think I have? Right, pour half of the pot of the grain. Half the grain in a pot, yeah. And let's get it boiled, OK? Vicky and Kelly have got the falafel done, the flatbread done. Tabbouleh is on the way. Teams, you have 15 minutes left. <laughs> Come on. Adam is still trying to thicken his mayonnaise. Adam, yeah. we need to stop moving to the um, to the tofu now. Right, talk me through it. Cut the tofu a centimetre thick. Yeah. And then cut it into th three long pieces. And then we've got to coat the chunky um, tofu chips because they're quite moist. Which, pla which flour are you going for, plain or corn? Let's use corn flour because corn flour is used for thickening things often. Let's go with that. I'm literally guessing, I have no idea. We're really behind um, because we haven't even done the coleslaw yet. We still need to fry the tofu um, and the pressure's really on at the moment. We need to get the coleslaw done. Yeah, I know we do. I've also got to fix me mayonnaise. Adam is really struggling with that mayonnaise. At the moment, we have this liquefied mixture of chilli and oil with some flavourings in it, and that's about it. Imagine, like, the worst drama scenario in Albert Square. That's what Adam's going through right now. Two falafels, two sets of tacos. Six minutes, let's go. Whoa, oh my God, I'm falafeling. Vic. Yes, babe? W what are you on to now? I'm cutting the onion from the um, pickled onion and radish pickle. Check your bread. My bread's not doing now, mate. Mine's not doing an awful lot. Adam, yeah. get your cabbage on the mandolin and do a, a, a really good handful of them. Oh, hang on, I've just got to go back and get the um, tofu out before it dies. Yeah. Yeah, my tofu's done. Mine's nearly done and it, it don't look too bad for me. So I'm quite happy with that. I think my falafels are done. <laughs> I'm going to let you rest, little guys. Are you going to be able to get these out? I'm going to try. I know, but I'm going to take it out the bottom. That I'm going to get them out. Don't worry. Don't worry. I can do impossible sometime. What, what should we put in the tacos first? Hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. We'll, we'll assemble it together. Hang yeah, on. Yeah, Just give me yeah. a minute. OK. Three minutes. I've got a problem here. OK, I've got one out. Cal, I'm going forward with the tahini, babe. How's your flatbread? Don't, oh, um, don't forget that. Flat? How's your flatbread? Lumpy. <laughs> We've got minutes to serve it. I know, mate, I know. Right, the order. Coleslaw, avocado, tofu, mayonnaise. Got it. I've still got to fix the mayonnaise. Kelly? Yeah? What plate do you want to put it on, babe? Should we put it on this nice big one? This one? Yeah. Do you fancy it? Yeah. OK, babe. Right, there we go. You know this couscous-looking thing? Let's shape it into a ball. No, 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 you put that on the bottom of the flatbread. OK. You have 90 seconds left. I'm going to put, put the uh, tofu in now. Yep. I'm putting about half a tablespoon of mayo on each. Well, the way things are going, mate, I'm not going to have any. Vicky. Yes, babe? What are you doing with the peanut butter sauce? Hey, you spread... I'm, I'm pouring it over the falafel and then on the side. I'm just trying to fix the mayo. 30 seconds! In 30 seconds. <laughs> Me radish is in on the side, hun. It's, like, on the... On the left... side, on the side. On the left of the plate, as you look at it. And I've put a little oh, bit on, on top on the of left. the balls. But, so that's my right. Thomas? Yeah? I'm having to serve the mayo on the side because it's just not worked. Got it. Well, I can't change mine now. That's it, stop. Woohoo! <sighs> so hard. I love the fact I'm telling you how to make mayonnaise and I cock mine up. <laughs> Blue team, come on. How fast are you walking? <laughs> I've just need, I've just got I'm, to the I'm, end. Yeah, me too. What 
you think, Greg? I think they're pretty good. I think they look remarkably similar. <laughs> you know what, Tomas? I have to say, your flavours are great. The mayonnaise is wonderful. The tacos are too thick, but I don't mind the char on the outside. Do them without oil, otherwise they're greasy. The tofu has no flavour. It's yeah. a texture, and yours is fine. It's a little bit crispy on the outside and perfectly fluffed in the middle. Great. I'm really pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, your tacos are nigh on perfect. They are just fine enough to hold everything together, and they are made beautifully. Your tofu could probably do with a little bit more seasoning, more crust on the outside and fried for a little bit longer. Your cabbage is nicely cut. Your avocado is well seasoned. Ten drops of Tabasco. Brilliant. That, Adam, <laughs> that mayonnaise stuff is disaster. That's egg yolk and oil in a jug. Yeah. That's why I didn't put it on there. I think we did all right. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it was much The communication was good. That's the It was yeah. actually. Oh, that's um, not bad between us. That's, um, that's not bad. Communication, communication. Sorry, what's that? <laughs> Red team, come on, bring your plates up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. Very hard. I mean, you, you've done terrible. Putting like a Cockney and a Geordie together. I mean, extreme language barrier. They're massive. Both of you, they are absolutely huge. Look the same inside. Do they taste the same? Hmm. Okay. Oh, we're doing all right. <laughs> He's making good sounds. Vicky, your falafel's well flavoured, full of herbs and seasoned. I like the sharpness, the sweet sharpness that you've got on your onions. I think your tahini paste is beautiful. You got decent seasoning in your salad. Uh, your bread is too thick. Kelly, your bread is hard, unfortunately, but the falafel themselves are soft, full of flavour, and your tahini is very, very good. You've got lovely sweetness on your onions and lots of veg through your bulgur wheat. The enthusiasm between you two as a working pair and the communication, I think, was great. <laughs> Do you know what would have been better? They gave us earphones to talk to each other. Come in, Vicky. <laughs> Blue Hawk has <laughs> added. It's time to roll the flat blade. <laughs> How many spring onions? Red Eagle. <laughs> I think there's some massive positives to come out of this as individuals and watching you work as a team. Listen, there's a big challenge coming up next and a great opportunity to learn. To mess it up, I think, would be criminal. Off you go. Thank you, Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> It's early morning, and Kelly, Tomash, Vicky, and Adam are on their way to face their next challenge. Metropolitan Police Academy. It is. It is the police. It is the police. Welcome to the Metropolitan Police Training Centre here in Hendon in North London. This is without doubt the biggest police force in the country. It's also one of the biggest police forces in the world. Over 2,000 recruits come through here every single year. Today, you have the honour of preparing lunch for 120 <laughs> recruits and staff. <laughs> you are in teams. Kelly and Vicky, you are working together as a team. <laughs> Tomash and Adam, you are a team. Two and a half hours until lunch is served. I suggest you four get on with it. 
that way. Nice I'm in. I'm with you. I love crumble. And we do, we do a, a meat pie. A meat pie or a lasagna. It's so dead easy. Keeping the celebrities on the straight and narrow is the police college's executive chef, Sophie Scott. Hello, chefs. Morning. Morning. I'm going to be your sheriff for the day in the kitchen. I'm expecting some quality, fresh dishes from you today. So, ten minutes, not long. Got to come up with something. No pressure, then, eh? No pressure. Come on, let's stop talking and crack on. Come on, Tom. No, I've got to go now. No, no, no. no it's down to you. Each team will have two and a half hours to create 40 meat or fish and 20 vegetarian main courses, as well as 60 portions of dessert. The larder includes salmon, chicken fillets, and tofu, fruit and vegetables, a range of dairy products, noodles, panko breadcrumbs, and a selection of herbs and spices. It's that usual thing, and when you're confronted with so many ingredients, you sort of go, ugh. Is there rice? I don't yeah. know. Don't know. No, there's... Don't know. Don't think so, lads. This is going to be a big deal for me. Completely out of my comfort zone. Have you ever done um, aubergine? No, I've done aubergine. You don't like aubergine? OK, well, don't do it then if you don't. I'm not going to do it because um, I want to taste it. My dad was trained here. He... He was a police officer and graduated, I don't know, 57, 59. So, yeah, being, being at Hendon, yeah, that's um, a bit of a connection. I've kind of got a bit of an idea, and you did a lovely salmon the other day. Yeah. So... The only pressure is we've got to get it out in two and a half hours, I believe it is. But as long as we keep it simple, I think everyone's going to be happy, and I think we're going to win the challenge today. How many desserts you got to make? 40, 60. Uh, sure, oh, why, don't, why don't we make a massive um, lemon pot, uh, like a massive batch of lemon posset? Can you do that? I'm, I'm, I'm very simple. It's just desserts. like a mousse, isn't it? You know what it's like when you're at work? You look forward to your lunch hour. It's like the best thing. If I mess up, I'm going to be like wanted person number one. And in a place like this, that's not a position you want to be in. Are we ready? Right, yeah. So, because we're now... We've got work on that. We need to clear that off and clear that table down. I'm going to work here, are we? Hi, ladies. Hi, Chef. How are we doing? Well, I think we're cooking on gas, if you mind the pun. Um, <laughs> we're going to do, like, um, an Asian-inspired salmon on a bed of noodles with the sugar snaps, pok choy, peppers, red onions and chilli going through. Nice. A um, bit of a, like, sauce with the sesame, the soy, all that. Mix it up, ginger. A little bit of a marinade That's for the was... salmon, uh, perhaps. Yes, like yes, yes, it, yes, yes, lifestyle. Yes, yes. Yep. And then um, the vegetarian equivalent is the tofu. We're going to fry it yeah. in breadcrumbs. Like style, like style. And then dessert, mm -hmm. dessert is a lemon posset with like a little couple of uh, shortbread bitties. Maybe crush, crush them up. Crush them up, put them on the bottom. Almost like a posset cheesecake. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, you're good, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Have you worked out who's doing what? So I'm going to start getting all the veg ready. You're going to start with dessert. And I'm going to crack on with the cheesecake thing. Right, I'm going to leave you to it. Right. Lads, I just want to wish you good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Right, I need a chopping ball. I think the girls' team have got a great plan. Take a noodle as a base. On top of that, a piece of glazed salmon, which has got chilli, garlic, soy and honey mixed together. Because there's a glaze over the top, that will keep the salmon moist. Once you've chopped the veg, we'll get started with the marinade. Get it on the salmon, give it half an hour, and then uh, get cracking with the tofu, maybe. OK. Vegetarian tofu with salt and pepper. Dessert. Cheesecake. Fantastic. With a compote of fruit. Cheesecake, for me, has got to have a lovely base, but not too much. It's got to be sweet, but not too sweet. Slightly salty with salted butter. We haven't got a lot of time for cheesecake to set, so rather than um, making it all from scratch and stuff, I'm using like already done soft soft cheese. I'm gonna whack it in the big uh, big big mixer over there, wallop it all up, add some icing sugar, get it across some crushed shortbread biscuits, top with some raspberries. Good to go. I've I've bacon onion. If it, I mean, it'd be nice if I'd do a puree. With the red um, team underway. The blue team is still working on their menu. I just, I just, I just, I just bake, bake, basically bake, bake the chop them. Adam chop and them Tom up. Ash, they got a bit of catch up to do. I might have to do the rice. Maybe a little bit behind. Need to hurry them up a little bit. Right, your final menu is. I'm going to do a breaded chicken on a tomato sauce. Yep. Uh, 
Thomas? Yeah, I'm going to use the same tomato sauce to save some time. I'm going to use some aubergines, cut them up, drizzle them with some olive oil and chuck them in the oven. And we're going to do apple and rhubarb crumble yep. with a fancy cream. I know there's a name for it. Chantilly. <laughs> yeah, there's some <laughs> vanilla in there. Chantilly cream. That sounds all right. Right, come on, can we get yeah, quick? Already running 15 minutes behind, Tomash cracks on with prepping aubergine for the vegetarian main. While Adam needs to flatten out 40 breasts for the breaded chicken, which will be flash fried, then baked. There's a lot, lot to be done. I mean, if there was a speed up button, it'd be handy. No, actually, a slow down button. Slow down button. Time turner like Harry Potter. That'd be good. I think the blue team's main courses are fantastic. Fried chicken, they serve it with a tomato sauce, making it a little bit posh and Mediterranean, but still for me. The vegetarian, big trays of aubergine baked with more tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, potatoes, and broccoli on the side as well. Sounds fantastic. I've never chopped so many aubergines in my life. Um, I only maybe do one for myself, and that's about it. Across the kitchen, Kelly is well underway prepping veg to be stir-fried with noodles and served with both mains. If I never see a pepper again in my life, I'll be happy. With her lemon cheesecake topping in the mixer, Vicky has made a start on a shortbread base. God, if you're ever in a bad mood, making a cheesecake's perfect, isn't it? Come here, there's a machine. Right, there we go, there we go, there we go, we're in. That's Great. it. Ah! So much easier. <laughs> Thank you. That looks like biscuit bears! Kel, do you want to check on the, um, the cheesecake, like, the actual stuff? Has it got to be a bit sloppy? If it's not you. Because this has got to go in the fridge, isn't it? No, that's kind of nice, that. Yeah, I'm going to try it. Oh, that's good. Is it good, babe? I think it is. Let me try, let me try, let me try. Do you know what? I might just put a little bit more lemon juice in there. Beautiful, that, mate. Should we put just one more lemon juice in? Oh, a little bit more lemon in, I think. Let's kick it up and off. Biscuit base is done. Let's get some piping bags. I think we've smashed it, Chef. Oh, Hold on, I'm trying it, yeah. It's really on. nice. Over the top. Is it? Ooh. Ah! <laughs> That's yeah, you haven't finished yet. Oh, I haven't, sorry, yeah. Quite right, right. We need a nice big spoon to get it in. Okay, babes. This has to last 60, so let's be sparing. Get a knife. There you go, right, quick. Right, go on. You start piping. Okay, babes. Great idea to do cheesecakes individually in ramekins because you don't have to worry about the presentation. Rush at the minute is just getting these in the air in the fridge so they have like sort of set. With an hour gone, Tomash's aubergines are ready to roast before being combined with a tomato sauce. I need to bung them in the oven because time's flying. Now that's the steamer. while Adam is preparing to breadcrumb the chicken. Oh, another set of firsts. Never done egg, egg wash, never bread with a chicken. What a learning curve this place is. Right. Right, okay. Flour, egg, breadcrumbs. If we do it this way... So it's a bit like battering a fish? Yeah, you should know that, shouldn't I? Well, I should. Yeah. But I'm not actually a chip shop owner. For reason. <laughs> right, so... Flour, all of it. Oh, God, this is going to be messy. Perfect, yeah. Have enough, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And then wrap it on here. This is going to take forever. With Adam still working on the chicken, Tomash has moved on to the tomato sauce to accompany both mains. 
my task and Adam's is very different at the moment, so there's not been an awful lot of communication. I'm just hoping that he's um, on time with his chicken breasts. The cooking them shouldn't be too much of an issue. It's the prep that's taking a bit of time. Adam has become fully aware of what a massive challenge it is to bash out and breadcrumb and fry <laughs> over 40 chicken breasts is a Herculean labour. Just start cooking start those up. Yeah, perfect. Do. If I can get this done in the next 20 minutes, I don't know, might be longer. Um, I can then go and help Thomas, who at the moment, he seems to be doing everything. Sorry, mate, it's just taking forever. No, 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 don't worry. On the red team, Vicky's 60 lemon posset cheesecake inventions are ready for chilling. I'm going to go on to the marinade for the salmon. Garlic, ginger, a little bit of honey. Oof! While Kelly is still prepping veg to go with the noodles. I'm going to put the noodles in the steamer. Right, OK, babes, sounds good. You've got an hour and ten minutes to go. We are going to be so tight. I felt like I was a bit cocky at first. I thought like we had everything under control, but we have got it under control. Of course, we have Kel. Of course, we have Kel. Your race. Your race. I'm just uh, stressing. Don't stress. That's when we go. That's when we start going wrong. Adam has almost finished frying off the forty chicken breasts that will then need to be baked while Tom Ash is ready to assemble the aubergine main. Are you happy with the taste yeah. of that sauce? Have you tasted yeah. it? But they are yet to start the crumble. Thomas, I'm, min I'm minutes away, mate. I've done 40. I've just got five spares coming out. I tell you and what, you, I'd but... rather be doing this than the chicken, trust me. Right now, for me, my biggest concern, will we actually get dessert from the blue team? but they're going to have to push hard. First opened in 1934, Hendon Police College is the principal training centre for London's Metropolitan Police Service. Hendon's really important because it's the start of your journey as a police officer. It's helping to prepare you for the role that you're going to do. All the 30,000 police officers currently serving in the Met have passed through Hendon, receiving 19 weeks of intensive training before officially joining the force. Being a cop is more than learning the law, it's dealing with and supporting vulnerable people. You know, we are the 24-7 organisation that people, people always call. The rigorous training programme comprises of lectures, exercise drills and role-play training. There's just a tight one-hour lunch break for police cadets to recoup before returning to their studies. Time is absolutely essential. They'll pause the training, they have to have their food and they have to be back in for training, so there is absolutely no give or flexibility. <laughs> Chefs, 50 minutes! It's not long! You need to start pushing it now. Prep for the blue team's crumble is finally underway. I'm so relieved to be out of that raw section. We've got to move on a bit now. And Tom Ash is working on a broccoli side to accompany both the main dishes. I'm still a little bit worried. What are you uh, worried about? With time. Is Chef panicking yet? Not especially, but we've got I mean, to get a move worry. on. Yeah, I know we've got to get a move on, but if she's not panicking, that's the result. Is that rhubarb not on yet? No, I've just finished it. Right, let's get that in then. Make that your last apple and let's get it on. Yeah. A little bit of water, a little bit of sugar, not like loads. Yeah? yeah. And let's just whack it up and get it cooking. All right. Right, where, where's sugar? On the red team, Kelly's also ready to move on from prep. I'm going to stir fry the vegetables now. Lovely, babe. Go for it, go for it. And the Asian marinade for the salmon is ready. The noodles are in, cheesecakes are chilling, and the salmon needs to sit in this marinade for 15 minutes and then it's good to go. It's going to be tight, lads, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to need your help to get this out. I'll help you, babe. I think 
feel like we should have left some water out. No, go on, I've got it, I've got it. Kelly, you sure? Yeah. Kel, watch yourself, I've please. I've got it, I've got it. She's got it. Seizing those rice noodles with lots and lots of sesame oil and soy is a really clever way of doing noodles in volume. Season the noodles first, cook your vegetables separate, mix the whole lot together, and then serve away you go. While her salmon marinades, Vicky can concentrate on the vegetarian main. Kel, I'm nearly done with this uh, tofu. Yeah. And once I am, I'm going to start cooking the salmon. Guys, just under 35 minutes to lunch. Lunchtime is fast approaching, but the blue team is running well behind. Their dessert they are right now struggling with. The crumble filling is still cooking. Now what they're going to do is assemble it all and get it in the oven. This is quite... Uh, wet. Wet. Straight off? Yeah. Potatoes are on, chicken's on, broccoli's on. It's literally the dessert. That's all we've got left to do. Right, ladies, how are we doing? Salmon is going in the oven, Chef. It needs to, pretty promptly. Yeah, it's going in immediately. Is your oven hot? It's getting there. It's not even on. Thought I put it on, Chef. Oh, my God. Sorry, What's this going on? It's it. Can I do the tofu? Yeah, start frying it. Kel is all over the noodles, all over the veg. I'm dealing with the uh, tofu right now. The salmon's in the oven. I don't really see where we could go wrong. That is a silly thing to say. You all right, Vic? Yeah, mate, cracking right on. Get the beans on, Kel! Oh, my God. With the red team almost ready for service, Adam and Tomash still have a lot to do. It's just taking too long. It's I have to do. Check with her. Is that too wet still? Do you know what? I think that'd be beautiful. Do you? Marvellous. Right, stick that over there. Get out of the way. Yeah, I'm out of the way. Your chickens, these are your responsibility. Make sure they cook, please. If they are, get them in the hot cupboard. Uh... It was gone over 75, so we're fine. I'd like you to check another one as well, though, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're definitely done. Morning classes are almost over for the police cadets. Guys, you've got literally ten minutes maximum. No worries, babe. Yeah? We've got this. Lovely Kelly looking great, mate. Come on, come on. An orderly queue of 120 cadets and staff is forming outside the restaurant. Five minutes, guys. We need to get it out now on the hot counter. That's Sam and Kelly, give it a check, mate. Salmon's done. Woohoo! The day is quite intense. Um, there's quite a lot of theory um, to learn the laws and your powers. So it is really important to get a nice, decent lunch. I think that's beautiful. Do you think? Stop with the hooking! No, man! <laughs> hey, Kel. We need some more tooth, whatever it's called. That funny stuff. How are you doing with the dessert? We're there. Do you need some crumble on Yeah, here? if you can crumble them. A late lunch. Uh, it can place restrictions on us. Uh, it gives us, obviously, less time to, obviously, one, enjoy our food and also to recuperate for when we do do our work. With just moments to spare, the crumble has made it to the oven. You ready, boss? Just want to get this tidy up. Everything looks fantastic. I'm so proud of everybody. Well done. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'm going to be walking into a canteen with a different attitude from now on. Here come the cavalry. Oh, my God, they're all in uniform. Well, hello. How hello are you guys? guys? Fish? Fish. Nice portion of noodles, sir. Yeah, thank you. You are welcome. Chicken? Yes, please. Chicken. 
Thank you. Chicken or aubergine? Chicken. Diners make a beeline for Adam and Thomas's breaded chicken with tomato sauce, boiled potatoes and broccoli. It was really good. Well cooked, nice big portion size as well. The broccoli was cooked just how I like it. Potatoes were cooked lovely. The chicken is lovely and moist. The crust on the outside is crispy and well seasoned. The tomato sauce is rich and intense with lots and lots of herbs. The potatoes are cooked perfectly and the sprouting broccoli hasn't been boiled to death. It's still got a bit of a crunch. Do you know what? If I was a clobber, I'd be ready to walk the beat now. Fully nourished. Who's next? Hi, honey. What can I get you? Salmon. This salmon is proven popular today. Everyone must have heard. Enjoy. Thank you. Hi, honey. Salmon? Vicky and Kelly's Asian-inspired glazed salmon with vegetable noodles and sweet chilli sauce is also in high demand. If you don't like it, they served it. It's cooked really well. The noodles as well, the sweet chilli sauce really complemented it. It was really nice. As you can see from the plate, there isn't a lot left. Red Team salmon, I think, is cooked OK. I like the glaze across the top, and then all that lovely glaze is going through the noodles. The noodles have got lovely sweetness to them, and they've got the saltiness of soy. And there is the sweet crunch of little vegetables in there, whether it be sugar snaps or peppers. I like that dish. Aubergine. Yeah, yeah there! Yeah. For their vegetarian dish, Tomash and Adam are offering aubergine and tomato bake topped with mozzarella. The aubergine was really good. It was um, too tough. It cut through really easily. The sauce was really rich and tomatoey, and it had the herbs in it. It was nice. Those aubergines are well cooked. They are slippery, but they're not falling apart. However, we could do with some more cheese in there. We've got some uh, panko fried tofu over here. Vicky and Kelly's panko coated tofu, topped with sweet chilli sauce, is also being served with the vegetable noodles. It was really tasty. I've never had it before. So, yeah, success. It's, it's full of flavour. The, the noodles are soft, they're great. The sauce, fantastic, really brings it out. The tofu's got a lovely crispy crust of panko breadcrumbs. However, noodles and tofu are two bland things. And without the sweet chilli sauce, there is very little flavour on there. And then there was none. We've got to get the pies out. With mains over, it's time for dessert. I've got about a minute left. They're a little bit blonde. Just get a little bit more colour in them. I'm just keeping me on them. What can we serve them on? Do you know what? I love desserts. I hope they don't eat all these so I can have one. <laughs> they look so pretty. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm happy. Those, yeah? Out of the cases, please. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Right! Puts up! Cheesecake! Yes, lad! Come on! There you go, just come and grab them. If you want cream, we've got cream here and I'll dollop it on for you. For dessert, Adam and Tomash are serving apple and rhubarb crumble with Chantilly cream. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. The rhubarb is cooked to perfection. It's really soft, the apple in there as well. It's really, really nice. So quite a bit of fruit in it as well, which was quite nice. And yeah, the cream on top made it even sweeter. 
That's a great crumble. You've got an oaty, crumbly sweet top, and you've got enough sourness from the rhubarb inside to give it sharpness. That is a good crumble. There you go, sir. Come and get it, guys. Cheesecake. Cheesecake. Vicky and Kelly have made lemon cheesecake topped with a berry compote. It's delicious. It's really, really nice. The biscuit base is well, really crumbly. You can taste all the fruit and it just tasted really kind of like a special cheesecake. Mm. Mm. I love that cheesecake. I really I think the flavours and textures are fantastic. It's got that oaty biscuit base, it's got the tart sourness of cream cheese, and it's got real sharpness for that berry compote across the top. As a dessert for 60 people, I think they've done a really good job. Fun. Oh my God, that was that? so hard work. Unreal. I'm really impressed with both teams, you know, seriously impressed. I think they did brilliantly. I'm amazed. I'm absolutely, I'm amazed. I can't believe it. It's 120 people between the four of us. But it was really enjoyable. If you ever go into your works canteen and moan about anything, you've got no idea how much work they've put in, so just enjoy the food and smile. That was probably one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And that sounds like such a dramatic thing to say, but I actually feel like I could cry. And that, <laughs> I feel really emotional and I don't know why. It was a real buzz. Real buzz. I really got into it now. I'd like to get to the fire and don't tell no one. <laughs> Today, our four came in here with the heartfelt desire to feed people good food. They're full of energy, they're full of emotion, and they're going to have to fight it out. Fight it out for a place in the semi-final. Oh. I'm still <laughs> Get away! You're the enemy! <laughs> Next time, Tomash, Kelly, Adam and Vicky are back to fight for their place in the semi-finals. Please rise. This has been the best thing I've ever eaten here. Yeah. <laughs> Two semi-final places to give. <laughs>